cumbersome. The exotic Byzantine princess, Anna Komnenya, who wrote an account of the First Crusade, described the European knights as lying on their backs and spanning the bow by putting their feet on it and drawing it back so they really could get a power advantage by using their legs and their whole body. So this really was relatively powerful. And then they could get up and shoot it. The Europeans' experience in the Crusades, however, introduced them to a new type of bow technology, one that allowed them to make shorter and more powerful bows. It was a composite technology, a technology which used different materials. This is a cross-section of a 15th century crossbow. And these little squares here are horn, and this area around the outside is sinew. Horn is a material that is good for compression, it takes great compressive strain, and that is the power of the bow. To hold it in place, they used sinew. This stuff, it's like the neck tendon of an ox, but if you hammer it, then what happens is you start to get something very fibrous. It really becomes, the more hammering, the more fibrous it gets, in fact, until it gets like this just like modern fiberglass matting. And just like modern fiberglass, it's held together with a type of glue, a type of resin. And the type they used was this. These are the swim bladders from fish. And you boil them up and they make the most wonderful glue. So this elaborate technology allowed the crossbow to go into the next generation. But now with these more powerful bows, they needed to devise spanning devices. One of the earliest was the belt and claw. So they would wear this hook around their waist and they simply had to bend on and they could lift it with the whole body and place it on the string like that. And there it is, ready to shoot. They were incredibly ingenious, always coming up with new mechanical devices for spanning ever more powerful bows. This one's a goat's foot lever. Later came the more elaborate rack and pinion. But perhaps the most exotic of all, it's called the windlass. And it really is a fairly time consuming business. You've got to really wind this up, but it does enable you to use bows of mighty weight. This really will span a very powerful bow. And by the 15th century, improvements in steel technology allowed bows to be made with steel prods. And they were the ones that packed by far the mightiest power.